Hi, my name is Chris Thomas. Welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to be showing you how to use a piece of software called Harvest Sounds. This software allows you to play back sound files almost instantaneously. This is really useful in school when you're doing drama or podcasting or any situation where you want to mix and play back audio. There are also many parts of the curriculum that require children to think about the impact sound will have on a piece of writing. As you can see here from the Year 4 Poetry Unit 1, children are asked to perform poems using actions and sound effects as a way of creating imagery. Harvest Sounds is an excellent way of doing this, so let me show you how we get started. The first thing to do is to download and install the software. You can download Harvest Sounds by googling for it and then clicking on the links that appear. As you can see, I've now downloaded the Harvest Sounds program to my computer, so now I need to install it. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a normal Windows installer, so instead you need to open up the zip file and copy and paste this folder into a location on your computer. I'm going to copy and paste it into my Program Files folder. Now I've pasted it into that folder, I can delete the zip file that I downloaded, and then I can create a shortcut to the program on my Start menu. To do that, I go into the Harvest Sounds folder, right click on H Sounds, and choose Pin to Start menu. We've now installed the software. The next thing to do before we can get started is to actually find some sound files that we'd like to play. Now you may well already have a source of sound files, but I'm going to download some from a web page on the internet, and that page is soundgool.com. Soundgool is an excellent place to find and download sound files from the internet. It isn't an audio search engine as such, because all the files are actually hosted by them, but that's good in a way because it also means you're guaranteed to get what you're actually looking for. So I'm going to start by searching for an ambient sound effect. And then it loads all the options and I can preview these by clicking on the play button. Now I know there's one that I'd like to use on page 2, and it's this one here. That's pretty haunting, so once I've found the one I'd like to use, I simply click on download. I'm now going to click on save, because I'd like to save this to my computer, and I'm going to put this in my music folder, sound effects. OK, I'm going to go ahead and find some more sounds now. OK, I think that's the one I'd like to use. So again, I'll click on Download, and then choose Save. So now we've downloaded our audio files, we're ready to start using the software. So to launch the software, you simply click on the H Sounds shortcut that you put on your Start menu, and then it opens up like this. The software is broken up into a number of scenes, which obviously relate to scenes of a drama. But if you're doing group work, you can simply rename a scene according to the name of your group. So I'm going to start by changing the name of this scene. And to do that, I click on Edit, Scene Properties. So I'm going to call this Group 1, because it's my scene from my first group in class. Under Notes, I think I'll add some details of their names. So as you can see from the tab, I've renamed my group, and my notes have appeared underneath. I'm going to go ahead and create a tab for group number 2 now. There we go, so we now have two groups set up on two different tabs. The next thing I need to do is to add some audio files. So I'm going to add these files to group 1's tab. To do that, I click on Edit, Add Sound. So it pops open a window asking me to enter the details of the new sound. The first thing I need to do is to select the sound file. To do that, I click here, and then I need to browse to my folder. Now it's already put me in my sound effects folder, so this is quite easy for me. I'm going to start by adding the horror ambient sound. Next, I need to create a name for this. And finally, add some notes, perhaps about when this file will be used. When I've filled in all my details, I simply click OK. As you can see, that file has been added with the file name, and also the description. To play this file, I simply click on Play. Woo! 
There we go. I can also play this file by using keys on my keyboard. So for this file, I simply press the number 1. I'm going to go ahead and add another sound now. This time I'm going to enter a heartbeat sound effect that I have. And as you can see in the notes section, I've put a little reminder to myself about how I should play this file. So as you can see, my second file has now been added. And if I press number two, we'll hear how that sounds. So there's my heartbeat, but of course it sounds a lot better when it's looped. And so by clicking on the looped button here, it will keep playing until I turn that button off. Or of course, I could click on stop to stop that file as well. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more files now. Right, as you can see, I've now added a couple of extra files, giving me four in total. Now my wolf sound, I really want to have next to my horror sound, because I want to play the wolf sound right at the end of the horror sound to bring it to a close. So by right clicking on four, I can actually move this up. Okay, there we go. So now my wolf sound follows on from my horror sound. As you can see, we've got a slight bug here with the numbers, but it doesn't affect the functionality at all. Now one of the excellent things about Harvest Sounds is that it can play more than one sound file at once. Let me show you how that could work. I'm going to tell my heartbeat to play it looped, and then I'm going to use my keyboard to press certain numbers to get sound files to play. So there we go, that's how we can use Harvest Sounds to play sound files in the classroom, maybe during a drama or a reading of a poem or a story. The final thing I want to show you is how to save these files. There's two ways of saving them. First, you can choose File Save. What this does is it will save the Harvest Sounds file only. It won't save any of the audio files. Now the advantage of this is that it keeps your file size down. But the disadvantage is that if you lose one of the audio files, then the Harvest Sounds file won't work properly. So the other option is to choose Export Project. What this will do is it will save the Harvest Sounds file and also any audio files that you have added, and it will put them all into a single folder. This is a great way of archiving your work, so you can use it at a later date, being confident that all your files will be there. So I'm going to click on Export Project. So as you can see, here's the file I just exported. If I double click on this, I've got my Harvest Sound file and all my audio files all contained within a single folder. I'd just like to show you one final use of Harvest Sounds. Many schools are experimenting with podcasts and live radio shows. Harvest Sounds is an excellent way of playing audio files during these shows. So let me show you how this can be done. So as you can see, I've added four audio files to my project. I've got some introduction music to start my show two music beds which can be played while somebody's talking, and then a sting, which is a short sound file to be played between features. So to start, I'm going to press 1 on my keyboard to play my introduction music. Whilst this plays, the children could be introducing themselves and outlining some of the things they're going to be talking about in this episode. As you can see, as soon as my introduction music ended, I press 3 on my keyboard to play my second music bed. As this plays, the children could be reading out their first feature on their podcast or radio show. Now, unfortunately, there's no easy way of stopping audio using your keyboard. Instead, you need to use the stop button here. So when I'm happy that I've finished my feature, I'm going to press stop on track 3. I'm going to then press number 4 on my keyboard to play the fourth sound file, the sting. And then I'm going to press number 1 to play my introduction music again. And then during this file, the children could be bringing their show to a close, talking about the things that they've covered and the things they'll be talking about in next week's episode. So there you go, that's how you can use Harvest Sounds to play sound files in the classroom, perhaps during a drama or also during a podcast or a live radio show. Thanks very much for watching.